along the Swiss Alps and just 60 miles from France, Geneva is Switzerland's melting pot, with an influx of international organizations like the Red Cross drawing in foreigners from some 200 countries, they're also drawn to the city's many new restaurants and contribute to its thriving economy. Geneva also remains a top tourist destination for its delicious chocolate, luxury watches and rich history. Geneva really started founded by some Celtic population who arrived here about uh, 2,300 years ago. They made, right over here, behind the cathedral there, they made a fortified city. This is Geneva's historic district, which once held Europe's largest marketplace and attracted people from all around the world. It existed for nearly 300 years. Today, it's a mix of shops and restaurants and apartments, but we're reminded of Geneva's old world charm through its architecture, including the city's cathedral. Since 1535, this cathedral is Protestant. And you can see Calvin was very good in marketing. He said, we Protestants don't go to the church, we go to the temple. And you see, it's really a temple. It was uh, put that way a little later, but in the idea of Calvin. And it is the Protestant place, we sometimes call Geneva, the uh, Protestant pilgrimage uh, place of the world. There's only one hotel in the historic center, Hotel Les Amures. The hotel preserved the outside of the building as well as the details inside. Heads of state, including President Bill Clinton, have stayed here, and the luxury suites start at $500 a night. Just around the corner from the hotel are three mosaics from the 1950s by Swiss artist Alexandra Singria, which depict the city's history. Right in the center of the old town, where we have the three cannons, uh, there are three uh, mosaics too. And these mosaics are to remember the three prior international eras of Geneva. And the first is Julius Caesar, having come to Geneva in 58 BC. Then the second mosaic more uh, is the, uh, the international fairs, uh, which lasted, as I said, about 300 years. Uh, Geneva was extremely flourishing then. And the third international era was, of course, the uh, Reformation. Geneva is also known for its breathtaking views of Lake Geneva, the largest lake in Western Europe and the deepest in all of Europe. Now the waterfront, of course, is a natural basin. It's the end of the Lake of Geneva, and it has really taken the shape how it is now in the 1850s. We add this beautiful fountain, which is the landmark of Geneva. And it's not the biggest fountain of the world today, not anymore, but it's the oldest, and that nobody can take away from us. This fountain, called Jetteau, was built in 1891, is 550 feet tall, and spouts enough water every second to fill four baths. The water is even safe to drink, and in the summer months, locals can be seen swimming here. We do a lot of sailing too, of course. And for two weeks, end of July, early August, we have a huge lake uh, festival with a lunar park all around the Bay of Geneva, and food stands and concerts of all kinds of music. And the last Saturday, the biggest firework of Europe. 14 tons of rockets go up in the air from the Bay of Geneva. It's fantastic. In Geneva, Switzerland, I'm Vanessa Yurkevich for Bluen Art Info.